Hello everybody. In this video, I will show how we can set up precise point position or PPP on the UM980 or 982 module from Unicore and achieve accuracies of around 20 cm without relying on a base station like we have done in the previous videos. However, if you are using a different hardware, I think this video will still be useful for you because you simply need to look up the equivalent settings for your particular hardware and that should still prove useful. So what is precise point positioning? Well, like I said, it is a navigation technique which achieves much higher accuracy than what you can do with traditional techniques, but it relies on additional data. So while for traditional positioning, you need the timing of the signal from the satellites to uh, triangulate your position down here, you also need the almanac, which contains the configuration of all the satellites in the constellation. And this almanac is transmitted digitally to your receiver every 12 minutes. So if you are used to one of those older GPS systems we used to have in our cars, sometimes if you haven't used your navigation system for about two weeks, which is the time for which this almanac is valid, you had to wait around 12 minutes before an entirely new almanac could be uploaded to your receiver. And then in addition to the almanac, you also have the ephemeris data, which is data which is specific to each satellite. And this data is sent every 30 seconds, but is only useful for about two hours. And then if, if you have all those uh, data received, you can achieve accuracy of around two or two and a half meters. However, PPP relies on an additional data set which refines the ephemeris and also in addition provides atmospheric correction. So as your signal travels through the atmosphere, you have delays mainly in the ionosphere and this delay can be corrected for if you have base stations which are spread around the globe and provide information about the delay in the ionosphere. And this data can be either acquired via a stream from the satellite or also over a landline by internet. So let's take a look at the reference manual. And what you will see here is that you have to first enable your PPP by those uh, combinations of commands here. And I want to point out that you have to have the right firmware version, which is higher than 11.8.3.3 for the UM980 model and higher than 11826 for the UM982 model. So before you embark on a, trying to enable PPP, make sure you have high enough of a firmware version. If not, there is a procedure to update and I plan to make a video on that in the near future. But if you have the correct firmware version, then you have several options to enable PPP. There is the P2BPP, which is the PPP service provided by the Chinese Beidou satellite system. But unfortunately, it is only valid in the Asian geographic area. And you also have a service provided by the Europeans. This is the E6HAS, which stands for High Accuracy Service. And it is provided by the E6 frequency of the European Galileo satellite system. So we need to make sure that we enable E6 in our signal groups. There's also a setting which allows you to get the signal via internet and not from the satellite. And then there is this auto version here, but for me at least it produces an error. So I'm not quite sure if this is actually enabled. In any case, if we take a look at the signal groups, you will see that signal group 2 here has the Galileo E6 and signal group 3 has the Galileo E6 and all the other signal groups do not have the E6 frequency enabled. So make sure that your master antenna has one of those two signal groups here enabled for PPP to work. All right, so let's jump then into our Uprecise software, which I have talked about in previous videos quite extensively. So if you haven't seen those videos, I suggest you watch them first. Also how to set up the module in the first place. But what we can do then first is take a look at the version number, so this version command, and then you have to look here. So I have the UM980 module and my firmware version is the 11.8.33. So this is the high enough of a firmware version for precise point positioning to work. And if, if this is satisfied, then I suggest you use the F reset command to set your module into the factory default. And then since I have the UM980 single antenna module here, 
I can use the signal group 2. If you have the dual antenna module, then I suggest you use signal group 3 for your master antenna and 6 for your slave antenna. But again, I have the single antenna version, so I go with signal group 2. And this will trigger a restart of our module. And once the module has started up again, we can then set it as a rover. Make sure all your commands get acknowledged here by response OK. We can set the convergence of the PPP signal to 10 cm in the horizontal and 20 cm in the vertical direction. And then we can take a look at our PPP solution by using the PPP nav command here. And what you should get initially is simply an acknowledgement of this command and nothing else uh, because PPP is not enabled just yet. So we can then configure it to use the Chinese PPP signal, which is the B2B PPP. And if you then use the nav command again, you will now see that you're getting a response and it says you have insufficient observations here. And this is because I am in North America and like I said, the B2B service is only available in Asia. So it doesn't work where I am. So I actually have to enable the European service, the E6 Haas. If I enable this one here and now get my navigation, you should see that now it says solution computed PPP converging, which means now our PPP service has started, but it did take some time for a solution to be actually computed. So we can then take a look at our regular GGA command and we're getting an NMEA response here where you get your, your location and this one here tells you something about the quality of your PPP solution. So if you take a look, for example, here, you can see here the breakdown of the GGA response. And over here is the quality. And those numbers here indicate the quality of our GNS fix, where one is single point precision, which is the typical precision we get if we don't do anything special. But eventually, our, we should see a two here for differential positioning. And once our PPP solution has converged, we should get a five here for RTK float. Unfortunately, we will never get an RTK integer like we get for real RTK with a close by base station. But once you have your RTK float, you sh then should get your 20 centimeter resolution. All right, so here then is some data I have recorded, where I have recorded for about two hours without PPP enabled. And you can see here the latitude and the longitude are drifting by around two and a half meters, which is to be expected. But then once I turn on my PPP in the, in the way I have just shown, you will eventually see that your PPP solution switches to differential, indicated by a switch from one to two. And then after around 10 minutes or so, you should then get that your PPP solution has converged. And then you can see now we have much lower drift in our position. So this position here actually is measured against a post-processing technique, which gives you accuracies of around two millimeters. And you can see uh, the 20 centimeters, which are promised by PPP, are somewhat achieved here, definitely for the latitude. And the longitude is a little bit of a larger difference. But I believe the PPP service is a pretty new service and is only fully operational in the European region right now. So hopefully within a couple months, the, the solution here will also be fully enabled in the North American region. All right, so that's what I had for today. If you don't want to miss my next video on how we can achieve the two millimeter resolution, I suggest you subscribe. And if you feel this video may be worth uh, for other people to watch, give it a like so the algorithm promotes it. And goodbye.